Proverbs chapter number 16. I'm going to begin reading in verse number 22. <clears throat> the Bible says, Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it, but the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth, and addeth learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as in honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. Now, we have taught before on, I think originally we taught out of James, where James says the tongue, being a small member, has a great deal of influence over your entire body. In fact, James goes on to say that if any man offend not in word or in speech, that he is a perfect man, not meaning sinless, but complete, because he's able to bridle the whole body. Right? Your tongue is the hardest thing to control about your flesh. Right? We also know that the tongue, right, out of the mouth, right, the abundance, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Right? That's why it's so hard to control what it is that you say, because your tongue's got a direct connection to what's down in here. Right? It's the things that you're passionate about. It's the things that you care about right, that work their way out of your mouth. Okay, now, why is it so hard to bridle the tongue? Because if you're angry, you're liable to say something out of anger. The right? Bible says be angry and sin not. Right, that's where that bridling comes in. Even though I'm angry, right, if I want to be Christ-like, I've got to be able to bridle the tongue, right, contrain it, or control it, rein it in, so that when I do say something, I'm not saying what I feel, I'm saying what is true. I'm saying what other people need to hear. I'm saying, you know, maybe somebody asked, how many times did the Pharisees ask something that tried to jab Jesus and get a reaction out of him? Right? And every time, instead of taking the bait, what's he do? He turns around and gives them the truth. Right? So we ought to be the same way. Well, in these verses, okay, using that as a springboard to get to where we're at here, it says, understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. Right now, what is understanding? Well, according to your Bible, wisdom and understanding are interchangeable. Okay, knowledge is knowing something, but understanding is not just knowing something, but knowing the truth behind it. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay, we know that every now and then, right around here, services... They get real high, big preacher shows up, there's no preaching. Okay, we know that. Okay, but the understanding behind it is that one, that's not a, that's the Holy Ghost, right? Making his presence manifest. Right? We know that according to your Bible, where two or three are gathered together in his name, he's in the midst. But just because he's in the midst doesn't mean that he shows out. Our Bible also teaches us that we're not to grieve or quench the Holy Ghost. So when services like that happens, it's because God's people get out the way and expectantly, right, they come offering their best unto God and God just does what only God can do. Now, that's the understanding behind services like that. It's not because, you know, we set the mood with the right music or the right person got up and testified. It's that it was all about him and not about us and everybody else got out the way. Right? That's the understanding behind it. Okay, the truth is, is that your tongue can do a whole lot of damage, but the understanding behind it, what we already talked about, it's connected to your heart. Right? It's out of your heart that your mouth speaks. Right? Your, your tongue doesn't speak with, you know, intellect. it doesn't consider, it doesn't weigh options. It just says what you feel if you let it go untamed, if you let it go unchecked. Right? Anybody ever had a bad day? You come home, somebody say something, ask you a question, like, hey, can we do this today? And you, absolutely not, we're not doing that today. Right? They, didn't, they didn't do anything to you. They didn't know how bad of a day you had. Right? But yet you take it out on them. What's that? That's out of the abundance of your heart. Your mouth's speaking. Right now, we're not perfect. Right? Not sinless. We're all going to have moments where we don't say what we ought to, even though we know better. Right? Well... Here, understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it, 
but the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. Right? If we want to improve our spiritual lives, right, but also our carnal lives, okay, what's it take? It takes understanding and wisdom. Well, where do we get that? Right here. Right? We've already said that a perfect man, right, meaning complete, cannot say what he necessarily feels, but say what needs to be said. Why do you think the book of Proverbs tells us that, you know, a word fitly sp spoken, more valuable than apples of gold and pictures of silver? But right? it's about finding the right thing to say, the correct way to say it. Okay, you can say no a whole bunch of different ways to a child. Right? One of them going to make them cry. The other one, they're going to ignore it because they know you're not serious. Right? But the third one, it'll get them to stop doing what they're doing and understand why it was bad. Right? That's understanding. It's one thing to know that, well, a kid probably shouldn't do that. But it's another way to, to well, I know they shouldn't be doing it. How do I get them to understand why they shouldn't be doing that? Okay? If you're you got little ones running around like me, they're going to ask you, why? 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 To this day. Okay? And I'm sure some of y'all are like this too. It's not enough for me to know what somebody expects. I want to know why they expect that. For instance, okay, started a new job not too long ago. Well, no, it's almost been a year now. Gosh, time flies, Brother Peter. But, when starting a job, somebody said, when you do this, okay, talking about using the new system, right, you've got to go through all these extra steps. Why? That seems inefficient. Right? There seems like there should be a better way to do that. Right? And it's because the, the system that they had put in, they put it in about six months before I got there. They, it's still in beta phase. They were still working out the, the bugs in it. And so they said, right now, that's the only way that we can do it. They're working on making it more efficient. Okay, I understand that. Now I know why I have to do 18 other steps that I hate doing every time I have to do it so that things go the way that they should. Right? That was the understanding behind it. Well, since then, they fired a couple of other new people. Right? Guess who they send them to to answer all the, the computer questions? Right? The young guy. Okay, well, guess what I've thought? Hey, I know this doesn't make sense. But to do this, you've got to do what you want to do and then do all these other things that you probably shouldn't have to do. But you have to do that for the time being because they still haven't rolled out the last patch. And they go, okay, thanks for explaining that. Right, we just nip it in the butt. There's a difference between knowing what to do and then why to do it that way. Okay, if you know why, so if you have the understanding on why this is the best way to do something, or why it is that you do what you do, or if you get in the Bible and understand that, you know, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. Our problem isn't with people out in the world. But they may be used as tools to try and hurt us, but they're not our enemy. But they're just doing what comes natural to them. When you have that understanding, it's a whole lot easier to love sinners. When you have that understanding, it's a whole lot easier to not take things personally. But without that understanding, it's real easy to make enemies out there in the world. Without that understanding, it's real easy to write people off and not want to show them the light of the gospel. But when you understand, hey, they're not doing it with malice. They're not doing it because they hate me. They're doing it because they hate Christ. In fact, Christ told us because they hated him that they would hate us. Not because we're wrong, but because they don't have the truth. They've been blinded, right, by the ruler of this world. But what he said, all that understanding gives you this, this nice thing called context. Right? A lot of times we don't get the glory of, of context. The beauty of your Bible is that it not only instructs us on how to live for Christ, but it tells us the importance of why we do those things. Right? You get in this book... You add to yourself understanding. But what's it say? It's a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. 
You want to know the most stressful way to live? Is you're doing something hoping it's the best way, but you don't understand how it's going to pain out. But right? like if you got in the car every time and said, I know that gas means go, brake means stop, but I have no idea where I'm headed to. I just know it's east. Right? We're just going to go east and hope that it all works out. That's going to be a stressful drive. Right? They sent me a photo of the place I'm supposed to go. I know it's east from here. And you're just driving around with a photo looking for something that looks like it. Okay, That's stressful. Okay, Back in the day where, with the atlases that you had to fold out on the whole front dash of the, the car, I remember going to Florida a few times with them things. Right? And then MapQuest came along. Right Now MapQuest is outdated and then they had Garmin's and Tom Toms and everything. Now you just walk around with it in your pocket. Right? But what does that do? That gives you understanding. I know where I'm going. I may know a general direction, but this gives me the understanding, you know, go left here, and then we're actually going to go west for a while, and then we'll make it back to east. Right? Or we're going to go north. We're going to go south. But we'll end up at the right spot. It gives you an understanding. You can see the road map. Right now, does that mean you know all the potholes along the way? Does it mean that you're going to know if a traffic accident's going to happen up around the corner? No. Right? Sometimes you may be able to get an alert that says, hey, there was a wreck up ahead, but it didn't tell you that when you started. Right? What do you say? Understanding gives us a road map. Like we just sang that song, the way of the cross leads home. I can get you in the Bible. I can tell you what the way of the cross is. Right? I may not be able to tell you all the potholes in your life. Right? That's where faith comes in. I may not be able to tell you when the road's under construction and they've got you going off the interstate to get back onto the interstate and you've got to follow detour signs. Right? I may not be able to tell you when you're going to have a flat tire, but I can tell you everything that God tells us about the spare and the trunk so that when that happens, we can keep going on for Him. Right? Understanding is your road map. It's a map quest. I know that that's where I'm headed, and I know that this is the way that God wants me to take. This is the general direction. Why? Because God may have specific things in your to Jesus, one time, right, you go and study it out over in John chapter number 4. Okay, he was going from A to B, but the Bible says that he must needs go through Samaria. You know what that means? He went out of the way to get there when it would have been quicker just to go in a straight line. Why? Because he had to meet a woman at the well. That there are times you know I'm going from here on to glory. Right? And I don't know what may, you know, be further down the road, but I know that he's giving me a toolbox and a tool kit and everything that I need. That spare tire doesn't help you out too much if you don't know how to put it on the car. Okay, or you can know how to get the spare tire out of the car. You can know how to get the car jacked up. But if you put the car on the jack before you loosen up the lug nuts, right, you're liable to take the car off of the jack when you go to loosen it after it's in the air. Right, it's one thing to know, oh, I need these things if, in case I get a flat tire. It's another thing to understand how to use them. Right, that's the understanding that we're trying to get to here. But what's it say about this understanding? That it's a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. Right? Understanding, we already said without understanding, it can be real stressful. Okay, understanding, friend, I'll give you a stupid example. Okay, I have gone and checked it. I have half of a reservoir of window washing fluid in my car right now but the light keeps coming on saying I've got low window washer fluid. I have checked it. I looked at it. Sometimes it goes on. Sometimes the light goes off. Right? It warms up. Light go off. It cools down at night. Light come back on. Right? Doesn't make any sense. I do not understand why this goofy light is coming on. Right? If I'm parked on a hill this way, light come on. If I'm parked on a hill that way, light go off. I assume that the sensor in there is somewhere toward the level but it's driving me nuts because I know I have it so I've been driving around for like three days just trying to use it all so I have an excuse to go to the store and buy some because right? I know if I go and buy one right now I'm going to have some left over and I'm going to have to throw it in the trunk or something so that somebody else don't use it so that the next time I need it I have it 
right? But that lack of understanding on something just that small, it's been driving me nuts. You say, that's silly. Well, I'm weird. Right? But we're the same thing with things in our life. It could be something insignificant, something that's non infinite The car's running great, right? Everything else is fine. That's just driving me nuts. Right? But we're the same way. Our life, 90% of things are right on track. Right? But it's the little things that distract us from what's going on on the road that if we can't wrap our head around it, right, what's that do? That'll cause us to stop, get out, look in the car, try to figure out what's going on with the car, right? When what should we be doing? We should just be going on down the road, living for Jesus. But a lack of understanding will actually cause you to invest time in things that aren't worth investing time in. It'll cause you stress over things that aren't worth worrying about. Right? The truth is, is that I know I got window washer fluid. How do I know that? Because one, I've checked. But two, when I hit the button, it sprays out. Right? It's not empty. The, I, the sensor's too high. I don't know. I, I don't know. You know what I've learned? It's not worth worrying about. If I was really that worried about it, I'd have stopped at AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts or in you know, half a dozen other places in between where I live and where I work. And I'd have bought one of them containers, poured it in there to make the thing go away. Okay, what do you say? There are things that it's not worth worrying about. Okay, in truth, the reason I haven't stopped and gotten it already, not just because I'd have some left over, is because I put the winter stuff in it last time, and I don't know what color it's going to make it if I put the purple winter stuff and I mix it with the blue or the orange summer stuff, and I don't want that weird color spraying on my window. I don't know. What are you saying? I'm saying there's, there are goofy things. It's just, I'm that way. I don't mix food. It's like you separate food on the plate. You eat one food at a time. When you, That's just how I am. Okay? You say, it's inefficient. I don't care. It works for me. You do what works for you. Okay? I understand that. Okay? But in all seriousness, got things in our life, that we want to know why they happen. We want to have understanding. Sometimes the Bible doesn't give you the answer, but it'll give you understanding. There's a difference. Okay? Fortunately, I've never had to change a tire in the middle of a downpour when it's like freezing outside and all that kind of stuff. have had to change a tire on the side of the road. Okay? But I don't know necessarily, right, if the jack and the lug nut that I have in the back of mine, right, if it's going to be easier or harder to use in the middle of rain when everything's slippery and I wasn't prepared and don't have gloves and everything else. Right? But I've got enough understanding to know I can get it done. That may take me longer. My hands may hurt a little bit more afterwards. Right? But I can get the job done. I know enough. Don't have all the answers. I'll figure it out when I get there. Right? That's understanding. Okay, answers are when we sit back and we get in here and we're asking God for every single detail in our life. Lord, how's this going to paint out? How's that going to paint out? And I can tell you right now, you're not going to get all the answers ahead of time because that rules out faith, and without faith it's impossible to please Him. Okay, in fact, when we ask God for all the answers, we're grieving God because we're saying, Lord, I don't want to trust Your will. I want You to give me all the answers ahead of time so that I don't have to use faith. Right? That's grieving him. The opposite is, Lord, I don't need to know all the answers. Just help me understand what I need to understand so that all these distractions, all these things that I'm worried about, those, they don't bother me anymore. So that I can continue to focus on going on down the road. Right? To extend our analogy, okay? If you were driving down the road and it said, hang on, let's think of a good good example here. Okay, here in a little bit, and they may have already changed it, I don't know, but they haven't changed the road signs. Okay, we know that Pleasant Valley Road is out yonder. That out here down at the bottom of the driveway, that's no longer Pleasant Valley Road. That's something like Old Pleasant Valley Way or some goofy thing that they couldn't just make it like, you know, why not just call it Pleasant Valley Way or Old Pleasant Valley Road? No, you have to... Again, I don't understand that, so it's confusing to me. 
Okay, but they named that something different. Well, we've got lots of missionaries, visiting preachers for years. They've been coming here. In fact, if they've got one of the pastor's old business cards, it says 8731 Pleasant Valley Road. Okay, if they're looking for an 80, you know, 7831 or whatever it is out there on the new one, it don't exist. They don't have the understanding that, oh, the road was diverted and they changed the name of the road. Okay, they may not even need to know that answer, okay, because if you put it into any goofy GPS system, it'll probably already know, oh, well, that one, it's not on this road no more, it's on this road. Okay, or if you look up the church name, it's going to give you the right address as opposed to putting in the wrong address. Okay, what we say? The understanding is church is still in the same spot, but the road to get there has changed a little bit. Okay, you're driving down the road, you're looking for Pleasant Valley Road in 7183, you're not going to find it on Pleasant Valley Road no more. Okay, but if you understand, there's just a roundabout, you got to go this way, and then it's still in the same spot. That, that's the understanding. What's the answer? Well, there's a new address, and if you type in that address, no, Lord, I know where I'm going. I'm okay if you don't take me the way that I used to go. I'm okay if you've changed some things. But Lord, just get me to where I need to go. Give me the understanding that we're still going back to the same spot. Nothing's changed. Right? Still the same building. Still the same people. Still the same pastor. Still the same hill that you got to drive up. That very little has changed, but that can cause a lot of problems. Right? The understanding is, God's going to get me where I need to go. Doesn't matter that he may take me a detour. Doesn't matter that he, you know, the world may change the names of the roads, but we're still driving on the same old paths that Jesus paved. But we're following in the same footsteps that he laid down originally. Call it what you want, rename it, right? We know we're going back to where we've been before. That's the beautiful thing about the, you know, way that the Bible phrases that we're going home. How can home be a place you've never been to but well, your conversation's already recorded there? According to your Bible, you've already got a mansion there. It said that he's gone to prepare a place for you. What's that mean? It's going to be there waiting on you. Right? You've already got a spot at the dinner table for the marriage supper of the Lamb laid out just for you. Plates, utensils, everything else. What do you say? Everything is already over there waiting on us. The only thing missing is us. That's why it's home. In fact, he already sees us as if we're already there. Right? Well, according to your Bible, right, we could say we're told we're going to heaven. Where where'd all that understanding come from? From here. Where'd I learn it from? Somebody taught it to me. Where'd they learn it from? Somebody taught it to them. Right? Understanding is a life spring because right? it takes away all that stress. Understanding is refreshing to your soul. You want to know how to not grow weary in well-doing? Ask the Lord for more understanding and it'll be refreshing to you. Right? It's one thing... But there's another thing I don't understand. Okay. Did not understand. In fact, Josh and Christian can both... They were there when this happened. Okay, a while ago, Miss Annette decided she wanted no more trees in her yard except for one. Okay? But in a certain order, the trees started disappearing. And getting rid of the tree wasn't the problem, but getting rid of the stumps was. And guess whose job stump duty was? It was us three. Okay, one time Josh showed up with a chainsaw. He got so tired of dealing with it, he just started putting his chainsaw down in the ground, hoping to cut roots. What did he do? He messed up his chainsaw and the stump was still there. All right, but we got it out eventually. Stupid thing. Right, did not understand why the trees had to go, just no new tree stump had to be gone. Okay, I remember all the sweat and the anger and the kicking of things <laughs> that went into getting rid of all those stumps. Well, guess what happened yesterday? Now mom wants to add a new tree. I told her that tree better be there when I die because that stump's not coming up out the ground if they put another tree in the ground. 
No, we already tackled this problem. We're not making new problems just to dig more stumps up out of the ground. It don't understand that. But you know what I did understand? My mom wanted to do something. She understood that she couldn't do it. She asked us to do it. Right? I was angry and I was kicking and we were sitting there thinking, how in the world is this thing still stuck to the ground because we've cut all the roots that we can see. Right? We pried the thing up and we've chopped at all the roots that we can get. We had pickaxes and, you know, the, the big snippy snips. But it wasn't a pair of scissors. Okay? It also wasn't a pair of hedge trimmers. Like, it, it was big cutters. Not bolt cutters, but because it, it had bigger mouth. That's why it was a snippy snippy. Okay, I don't know what the name is for it. Okay, I knew it cut things, and we got all them roots cut, but it's still stuck to the ground. Okay, you know what got us through all of that? You know why? Was, this thing's stupid. It don't want to come out of the ground. Let's leave it in the ground. You know why we didn't? Because we had the understanding that mom wanted it done and make mom happy. Right? That's why we did it. The easiest one was a stupid cherry tree in the backyard because that thing's so rotted, it just came up out the ground. That, that one wasn't hard at all. What happened? I should have reveled in that. Right? But at the time, I was like, man, that's pretty easy. Thought the next one would be that easy. Not that easy. Okay, in fact, next two, not that easy. But what got through all that frustration, what got, it was the understanding, right, that that's what mom wanted. Want to make mom happy? We got to get the stump up out of the ground. That's why we didn't stop. Right, that's why after the chainsaw quit, we still looked at it and said, well, there's got to be another way we can do this. Guess what? Stump eventually came up out the ground. It's not there no more. Right, we had enough understanding to know we can't quit. We had enough understanding to know that it was worth doing. Right, what did that do? That gave us a little bit of relief. Gave us a little bit more gas in the tank to keep going. That made the frustration disappear because, hey, just because I'm angry at it doesn't mean that it changes. It's still in the ground. It needs to come out. What do you do? You take five, you come back, and it's like, all right, let's look at this from a different angle. Right? What was that? That was a wellspring of life to our souls. Just that little bit of understanding. Right? I can't begin to comprehend everything that's going on from God's point of view in every single person's life. You know what I can't understand? The little bit that he wrote down for us to understand. And you know what that little bit of understanding can do? It can not only be a wellspring of life for you. Look at verse number 24. Pleasant words are as honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Verse number 22. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. Well, pleasant words can be spoken to anybody. Right? Your understanding will be a spring of life unto you. Right? It'll give you, you know, energy to tackle the things that your flesh wants to quit on. Right? It'll keep you motivated when there's so many other things that distract you in the world. Right? That, that'll be a spring to you. But verse number 24 says, Pleasant words are as honeycomb, sweet to the soul, health to the bones. Your understanding can benefit others. This is why we started off with that whole you know, the reminder on the things we've talked about the tongue. Right? When you have more understanding, right? Verse number 23 says, the heart of the wise teaches his mouth, addeth learning to his lips. What's that saying? The more you understand, the more your words will be laced with understanding. The more wisdom will be found in what you say. Right? You'll be able to counsel other people instead of just giving opinions. You'll be able to tell them what thus saith the Lord as opposed to thus saith Jordan. And you don't have to quote a Bible verse to them to do it. Right? There's, this, there's understanding and then there's folly, according to verse number 22. Understanding is understand the truth of the Bible is truth. You want to know why some people that are wicked as all daylight can go out and prosper? Because God says you reap what you sow. And they may be wicked, but they may be hard workers. They may have labored hard and they're reaping their reward. They're not getting anything spiritually from it. 
But God's not mocked. Whatsoever you sow, that shall you reap. Right? Where do we get that understanding from? From the Bible. God lets it rain on the just and the unjust. He's no respecter of person. You work hard, you're going to succeed. Right? Well, verse number 24, pleasant words are as an honeycomb. They're sweet. Right? One thing, when the doctor says, here, take this medicine, and it tastes awful. It's another thing, when the doctor says, here, here's your medicine, and oh, by the way, that one don't taste so bad. And then there's Advil, which for some odd reason is coated in sugary goodness. Okay? Have you ever tasted Advil? It tastes a whole lot better than all the other ones. Okay, the other ones you got to swallow before you start tasting it. Advil, not that bad. Advil, the best one on the lot. I don't know what it's covered with. It don't taste like Skittles, but it tastes better than all the other ones. Okay, it does taste sweet. Brother Aaron looked at me like, what in the world is he talking about? I'm like, have you ever had Advil? I thought everybody knew that. Right, as Mary Poppins said, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. Okay, well, we know that honeycombs are sweet. But you know what's in honey? There's protein in honey. If you eat honey from around where you live, it'll actually help out your allergies. Right? You can live off of honey and just a little bit of everything else. Hey, you know that? John the Baptist lived out in the wilderness on honey and locusts. That honey don't just taste good, it's good for you. So all the while, those pleasant words that come about because you've asked God for just a little bit of understanding and you've been faithful to study and you've been faithful to ask. Right? You've been faithful that, hey, pastor, I want to know a little bit about this. He may give you a book. He may give you a chapter from the Bible. Right? He may give you a little pamphlet, something that he read along the way and said, hey, this really helped me. If you got any questions, let me know. But if you're faithful to pursue the answer so that you can have understanding, you know what your words are going to have? Understanding. And when somebody says something to you and you can understand why they're in pain, you may not be able to give them the answer of why they're in pain, but I understand why people get cancer. Because a long time ago, sin entered into man's bloodline. And ever since then, all kinds of crazy things have been happening to people. I know why sickness and disease and plagues and everything else happen. Because of sin. I can't understand why that person got it. I can't give somebody an answer on, well, this is why you are going through this. But I can say, all this happened because man disobeyed. But God's faithful, God's merciful, God's graceful. Right? Even though we go through this, right? God said that he would help us along the way. He'd be a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Right? That little bit of understanding can go a long way to help comfort people. Right? It's one thing when a saint gets sick, God forbid they make it to death's door, I know that the thing of death has been removed from them. I know that if God wants them back in heaven, the worst place they can be is here. Right? But also the other way around. I know if God wants to touch them and heal them, the worst place that, you know, they could be is in heaven if God wants them here. But I understand just enough to know that the will of God is always right. I understand enough to know that just because I don't enjoy it doesn't mean that it's not the best thing to be done. Now, just a little bit of understanding, you pleasant words to other people. They're sweet. That means that they don't mind hearing them. In fact, it's refreshing to them. They enjoy it. Okay, but also, as in honeycomb, there's benefit to them. It's what they need to hear, but it also is sweet to the ears. Right? But then, it says not just sweet to the soul, health to the bones. Did you ever stop and think that the things that you say could actually be what another person needs to hear to make it through a day? Or that what you say to somebody could actually impact them spiritually? to where it gives health to their bones? Are we not instructed to bear one another's burdens? 
Most of the time we think that that means that we've got to link up shoulder and shoulder and take all the weight off of somebody so that they can sit there like the minute Ziklag that could not go on, they stuck by the stuff. The Bible says that they got just as much of a reward as everybody else. Why? Because they did what they could. Right? We think that it's going to be a bear, laborious, that we're going to have to break a sweat to bear somebody else's burdens. You ever think that just a few pleasant words could actually give somebody enough strength that they can continue on with their own burden? That because God's given you just a little bit of understanding, maybe you've gone through it before and you've got the experience, maybe God's shown it to you from the Word and even though you've never experienced, you understand, right? Maybe not why it happened, but you understand how to overcome it. Because you've lived longer than somebody else, you've just got a few life lessons. But on, it's always right to tie it. How do you know? I've, I've tried it. It works. Right, trust me. Right, I know it's right to get up and seek him early in the morning, like David said. Because right, it'll keep your mind on him the rest of How do you know that? Because I've had the days where I did it and the days that I didn't, and I much prefer the days when I did. Just a little bit of understanding can be not just sweet to somebody's ears. I, I mean, I always like cutting up, being sarcastic, right? mostly because I like making people smile. Right? At work, I'm always trying to cheer people up. Right? We want to see other people happy, but it's one thing to say something that's going to make them, it's sweet to them, it's refreshing, but it's another thing to know that more than that, it's health under their bones. Right, this is more than just health to the muscles. Right, it's not good for, you know, all them goofy. I went down a rabbit hole one time and looking at like all them snake oil salesmen. All of them said that they'd all help a lumbago. Right, all of them, everything, even today. Hey, take this Nyquil, you know, cold and flu. What's it going to help with? Well, it might help your back pain. Right, it's got anti-inflammatories in there. It might help lumbago. Instead of just giving a blanket answer that, well, hey, this should help somebody with their, instead of just the generic, well, it might help. Right? Knowing, no, this worked for me. Knowing that it's not just good for, you know, like what, what was that thing? Oh, the old John, John Madden, tough acting, tan acting, right? What's that good for? It's good for athlete's foot. Right? If you've got a sore wrist, don't put tough acting and acting on it. It's not going to help. Right? If you've got some sinus problems, you might be able to take Vicks Vapor, uh, put it up underneath your nose, and it may clear your sinuses where you can breathe out your nose again. Right? But if you've got tennis elbow, don't rub Vicks Vapor rub on it. Right? Those are just treatments of symptoms. Right? When it says that it's health under their bones, y'all know what your bones are actually responsible for? There's this stuff inside of your bones called bone marrow. You know what bone marrow does? It makes blood. Right? Your bones are the entire support system for your entire body. You break a bone, may not be able to walk, may not be able to grab things anymore. Right? Everything you do, it's because a bone inside of you is moving so that you can do it. Right, and sure, muscles and ligaments and everything else, they have their place, but muscles and ligaments, unless they have bones to attach to, they're not doing anything. Right, you, when the Bible says that it's health under their bones, what it's saying is it's good for their whole body. It's good more just for their, you know, it's refreshing. It's honey, it tastes good. Right, but it's health, strength, vitality to their entire being. Okay, now, if there were a miracle cure out there somewhere, right here, take this. It's, it heals everything. Now, it doesn't matter what you have. It'll be health under your bones. But we'd be foolish not to take it. Okay, we'll worry about the side effects later. We'll have to come up with a new miracle drug to fix the side effects of the first miracle drug.
Okay, but if it existed, that would be foolish not to use it. Well, I may not have the problem to somebody's, you know, bunions out there, okay? But when it comes to spiritually, right, regardless of what ails somebody, I do have a miracle, you know, it is a miracle, it's the Word of God. It's been preserved for thousands of years. It's a miracle that God would even take time to think about how little we understand to write down understanding for us to have. Right? But I do have a miracle. may not be able to take away somebody's problems, but it'll be health to their bones. It'll be sweet to hear. It'll be a wellspring of life for me. What's that mean? All around, it works good. You know why that is? Because it doesn't come from man. It comes from God. So knowing that there is something out there that can help, not just me, but other people, that I can use it to make an impact in somebody else's life, how come so few of God's people say, Lord, help me have more understanding? Lord, I want to know what you want me to do. And Lord, I don't need to know why it's going to work. I don't need to know every little tick along the way. But Lord, help me understand why this is best. I, I admit that it's best. Lord, by faith, I'm going to follow you. But Lord, just give me a little bit of understanding so that I can show it to other people. You do realize that's why Solomon was able to write down so many Proverbs because he asked God for wisdom to lead God, lead God people correctly. He said, Lord, if you're going to make me king over your people, I want to know how to do, how to lead them according to what thus saith the Lord. And God gave him a whole lot more wisdom on top of it. Guess what he did? He wrote it down because he knew that it was health unto other people's bones, that it was sweet as a honeycomb, that it'd be a wellspring of life to anybody that embraced it. But we've got a whole lot more than just the book of Proverbs on understanding and instruction and answers the questions that the world will never be able to give us answers for. The world's all about confusion and chaos, not about understanding. They're ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of truth. They can't even figure out, you know, that God exists. Right? They keep looking. They keep finding all these other things that they put up as answers. Guess what? They don't hold up for long. There's still things about the earth that we don't understand, but yet we think that we can understand all of existence. And I forget what percentage of it is that we don't even know what's under the water. Right? We may know how deep down it goes. We may know, you know how cold or how hot the water is there, but we still can't figure out what's even down there. Right? We may have climbed to the tallest mountain on earth, but nobody can tell you how that mountain got there. But I can. I can't give you an exact, I can't give you a timeline. This happened to this and then this and then this. You want to know what happened? God turned the world upside down one day with the flood and he moved everything around and then uh, Mount Everest showed up after the waters disappeared. You say, well, that, that, explain that. God didn't give me the, exp he just gave me the understanding. There's enough proofs out there we don't have time to get into them all. But you know what the proofs say? God was right. His understanding was enough. Right? And Lord, just give me the understanding to stay focused that I don't get distracted by all these things that don't matter. The truth to stay focused, or the secret to stay focused as the Christian is not one day waking up and finally reaching some spiritual maturity to where things don't bother you anymore. It's just that God gives you enough understanding to know those things aren't worth worrying about. That these things, they may be a pain, but sitting there and fretting over it all day long it isn't going to accomplish anything. Right? You just leave it up to God and you keep going. Understanding actually gives you more faith. Understanding gives you more strength. Understanding gives you more, according to this verse, life. Not life as in everlasting life. Not life as in it's going to add years to your life. Life as in it'll give you the ability to live as God wants you to live.
Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.